Today I'm using Google Authenticator as a web authorization uh, secret code. Let's check it out. Hey there, it's Tom with Tom's Tech Show and uh, I'm still in the middle of trying to get my office set up correctly. I've got a uh, ton of boxes, ton of shelves, all kinds of stuff. I think I want to move this desk so I've got a blank wall behind me so I can put those shelves and set that up instead of having the window over here. Um, so I've got some things to do, move what we've got. Sister-in-law's coming in to town and other things. So I've got to clean up and get this room completely redone. If you could only see past what I see on the screen, you'd be like, oh my gosh, how are you living there? But we're doing it, we're here. Okay, so today I had an idea. I needed to create an API. So. I need data from one service, one system to pass to another system, but I need it to be authenticated. I don't just want any data, anything to be called to be able to push that through, to be able to get the data into it. And I thought, well, what, how do I generate this authentication code? I could use a ginormous string that's, you know, all hex, you know, big, huge GUID of some kind. But then I thought, well, what about using um, kind of, we have our Google Authenticator that generates this, you know, six-digit code based on um, a secret that is never shared. So I get both ends of my my client of the API and the API itself to have this secret, and then when I call the API, I pass the six-digit code to it and do some other checking, like what data is going through how many pieces of data are going through, whether those pieces of data are valid, and then be able to process that information based on that. So I thought, well, that's a pretty good project. So I did find out on the internet, there are a couple of different libraries that will allow me to um, do this. So I'm using the PHP once I tried a PHP and then a PowerShell one, and they didn't come up with the same values. So I'm now having the PowerShell one call the PHP code, so that's the same code across everything. Okay, so here at the top of the document, I have my secret that is never exchanged over the internet. Those those are you know completely basically offline, right? Um, so I can get I can set the secret, or um, here I have code in here in my actual application that I'm using it stay saved in a database and the next step for that is to encrypt it in the database um, but you can use you know code to pull it out of the database and, and set it up that way if you want um, if you're dealing with some local data okay so then here's the function these libraries Google Authenticator interface uh, fixed bit notation Google Authenticator and this QR code uh, generating library and here we get our authentication code, so our auth code. Um, so if our authentication is set, so if I did get a parameter that says auth, then I'm going to check that against the secret. If that secret matches, then I go and get my data, see what if if the value name is also passed. This is very simple. You can do tons of data after this, but my name is also passed. I count how many fields making sure that name is there. And then if it is, then I'm gonna print the name and say success. Typically what I'm going to be doing is updating the database because it's an API throwing data into the system here. Okay, if I get if I do that, then I'm gonna send back a 200 response code, which is okay. If the auth codes don't match, then that's gonna give a 401, which is not authenticated. And if I do, if anything else, if the data or something is, is bad, then I'm just going to do a 400, which is a general error going and connecting to it. So all these things, you know, all this stuff, you know, works pretty good. I do have a little tool that I wrote uh, that lets me here see that, uh, I don't know if I can make this a little bit bigger. Let's zoom in here. Okay. So right now my code is 252811. Now the nice thing about this is from this I was able to you know generate the QR code and actually put it into Google Authenticator. So here's Google Authenticator 252811 and that is the same number that's on the screen so I can have this 
as a validation of the number that I need to use to put it into the into the system. So if you saw, we had that number. What's the new number right now? The number is 384302. So this is just me typing it in and saying go and boom. I've successfully passed my name and it says success because this auth code matched what was in the auth code generated by the system. And these are all based on that secret that you know nobody else knows. So if you get this number, if you somehow get this number and find this URL, you're not, unless you happen to hit it at the same 30 second window, you're not gonna be able to get through it. So here, if I go and I do some refreshes on the page, now that the uh, now that it's changed do some refreshes and then eventually it will die so now the code has changed it's now 401 not authorized so you can't so this code is no longer good none of the data that you pass to it is going to be accepted if i don't do anything if i leave it empty that's going to give us my error 400 saying that this page is not working I don't know what to do. So that's pretty good. That's kind of how I want it to function. That's what I want to throw back to my uh, client when I call the API. So next thing that I did is since the PowerShell API that I found did different codes, ended up with different numbers. Um, I don't know what the difference what the difference is. I, I put in some support requests to them to see if I can get that to be the same. We'll see. That happens but for right now i have this thing called uh get code so we do get code which we're just doing a simple php script that we can call php from the command line so i can call that i can bring data over and i can get that validation um, so here we do we do the same thing we use add the google authenticator libraries using the same secret uh, and then I get the secret and then pass the code back to it. So I run a script called call API and that's all that's doing is calling PHP and telling it to call the get code uh, PHP file. I generate the URL, I do a URL request and then I write what the uh, result was. So here, if I do uh, just run this. I run this PHP code and just run that. It comes back and that's my code. So, and I can see right now on my phone, uh, 786, 756899, that's the code on my phone. So it just actually changed. So if I run this again, there we go. That's the new number, 777541. So I know that I'm getting back the right number. Now, if I want to actually run the function called call API, so this is going to be the client calling this API and sending that code and boom, I get a success. So we have the same secret generating the same Google authentication code. So for that 30 seconds, as long as this code is, every time this code runs, it's gonna be successful because they both have the same secret. So unless you have that secret, you're not gonna generate the right code. And if you get, if you try a random code, I mean, it might be available for 30 seconds, but after that, if you happen to hit one of the random codes, one of the 999,999 ,999 plus random codes that are there, if you happen to hit one during that 30 second window, then it's only gonna be valid for 30 seconds. So then once that 30 seconds is done, you're gonna to have to start trying to hack it all over again. So, but my call API, since it knows the secret can generate the code every single time, it'd be successful every single time. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing with this. Um, I thought it was pretty, pretty good being able to do that, being able to call that uh, API, getting all that set up. Um, I'll have links to the PHP library down below, and I will take all this code and put it up in my Bitbucket. And so you can download it, play with it, do some stuff that you want to with it if you want to try and use this for APIs and, th and things like that. So if I do find a a PowerShell native version of the code generator, then I'll post that as well.
but um, this seemed a pretty good solution instead of generating a trying to generate some type of sing hash that was always used all of the time this is going to be you know new numbers cycling every 30 seconds I thought that was going to be a pretty good solution also when I put this up there I will also be uh, using it's going to be an AWS so the security groups will be filtering out what IP addresses the the client can source from so that will be add additional security and then also taking the API directory and separating it off onto its own web server its own directory so that nobody can come back and try and walk directories around and things like that to make it as secure as possible a lot of things here going on but it works pretty smoothly pretty cleanly I'm pretty happy with how it all came out um, I did take quite a bit of time this afternoon to get all this set up so we can we can put it out there so um, yeah there we go all right uh, so that's a pretty easy way to use uh, PHP and PowerShell or some other type of client uh, to be able to use Google Authenticator type codes and that type of authentication instead of using it for two-factor I'm using it as the primary factor but now it's just cycling every 30 seconds so keeping that going all the time to keep you know your this API from being hacked and accessed by anybody over and over again. so seems to work pretty well all right if you have any questions about this how I set it up or anything leave comments down below um, thanks for watching and thanks everybody for subscribing and commenting I get so many great comments I just thank everybody for that uh, it's been it's been great it's been a lot of fun uh, trying to get some more videos out this next week uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11 is now doing more things. Uh, we can now build an ISO and do things like that. So we're going to make videos on that and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So, all right. So thanks for watching this one. Take care.